what have the Romans ever done for us? Well, quite a lot actually, but that's not what we're asking today. We're asking who was the first Roman to conquer Britain? Oh. Um... Oh, I'm not sure. What's his name? I don't know. I feel really bad for not knowing this. No, I don't know this one. <laughs> we know that the Romans rocked up about 2,000 years ago and then really let their presence be known for a good few hundred years until, well, they got sick of us and they left. It's, that's the only logical explanation. But who was the very first Roman to hop on a boat, make his way across the water and conquer what we call Britain today? And how did he do it? Yeah, but do you, do you know? I'm not, I'm asking you. That's what we're going to find out today. If men really are thinking about the Roman Empire like all the time, then surely I can find somebody to help me figure out who was the first Roman to conquer Britain. Now I just gotta find some men. Who do you reckon was the first Roman to conquer Britain? Okay, good question. I do know this one uh, because it was, um, it was Brutus. Now, I have to say, I, I can't remember who, who it was. Uh, it was one of the it was one of the first century emperors, right? Not uh, not Julius Caesar's mate, but like an ancient Brutus, and that's why we call Britain Britain. I heard Brutus conquered the uh, indigenous giants of Britain and claimed Britain. That's what I, I heard. The indigenous giants. Yes, I believe it. The giants were the indigenous race before Homo sapiens. Uh huh. Augustus or something. I'm just thinking of names yeah. here that I'm trying to go for. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I've got in my head, but I haven't got a clue. Alright, it's what the word Caesar comes into my head, but well, probably not. <laughs> that's Julius Caesar, I think. Uh, well the first one who tried was Caesar. I mean he tried and failed. Uh... Mm, I think it's Claudius. <laughs> oh yeah, what can you tell us about Claudius? Nothing much other than he was the first Roman to conquer Britain. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Hadrian? Is it the one with the wall? Oh, Hayden, Hadrian. Hadrian's? Hadrian's wall? I believe Hadrian got a little bit far because of his wall. <laughs> uh, that's my knowledge about Roman emperors going into Scotland is based on Hadrian's wall. Uh, well, I'm going to say Septinius Severus. Agricola? Is it Agricola, maybe? Do you know, like why he wanted to invade Britain or why Romans generally wanted to invade Britain at that time? I suppose I think they got as far as Gaul, like the conquest of Gaul was like quite a big uh, milestone and then I suppose maybe because Britain's just like a short hop over and they must have been aware that Britain was there, maybe, maybe it had useful resources that they thought would be good to have control over. I can't remember the emperor who conquered Britain, but I remember that the reason why he did that was because he needed, or like he felt that he needed a great military victory, because that's that was the way how he would like cement his like standing. Uh, because they were colonizing everywhere. How do you think the Roman invasion is remembered? Is it remembered as a good thing or a bad thing? I feel like by and large, yeah, it's been given quite a positive spin, as in the Roman. Uh, brought lots of useful civilising things uh, to Britain that it's perceived that weren't there before. Uh, I mean, everyone always says about, you know, roads and um, villas and uh, baths and hot water and, and that kind of thing. They brought us roads, um, roads and toilets. They had the baths, they had, uh, I think they even did, the, you know, the sewers and stuff. We've got some straight roads, uh, we've got aqueducts, we've got... Hadrian's Wall. They had some good architecture, they had some good the Roman baths. That's true, but we did have slavery. So that, that's kind of like a big like, ick, like factor and stuff. So do you think we'd be better off being ruled by the Romans today? I think they ran things quite, um, it, was, it was very militant as well. It'd be like being run by the military all the time. I guess if the Romans had stayed, like the English language, we probably wouldn't have actually English because like Anglo-Saxon in the Asian would have made potentially never happen. We would have, we would all speak potentially a version of Latin. I think probably, yeah. I think they've got their heads screwed on the Romans. Maybe, you know, I'm a, a bit of an anarchist. I'd rather be with the giants. Right, so that's interesting. People seem to be pretty conflicted about the Romans. Yes, they were an invading force, but they also gave us some pretty cool stuff like running water. However, we're after the first Roman to conquer Britain. Our five rival Romans are Julius Caesar, Claudius, Agricola, 
Hadrian and Septimius Severus. Now we just need some expert knowledge and for that I'm heading to meet Dr Simon Elliott who will hopefully be able to tell us who was the first Roman to conquer Britain. Hi Simon, nice to meet you, how are you doing? Great to meet you Louise, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm hoping that you're going to be able to help me figure out who the first Roman to conquer Britain was. But before we get into that, why, why have we met here? Louise, this is the beginning and end of Roman Britain in one place. This is Richborough Roman Fort. And if you look around us here, you can see a slice of every phase of Roman Britain. So on the tree line there, that was actually the shore. That's where the sea was. Exactly, yeah. exa exactly. So it's a port. So this is one of the key ports in Roman Britain, one of the earliest ports in Roman Britain. So big question, why did the Romans want to invade Britain? Often the Romans expanded their empire to create provinces, later the province of Britain, because it gave them the opportunity to, to make money. It's all about making money. They don't have provinces because it's nice. It's all about rinsing the place for as much money as they can get into the Imperial Fiscus Treasury. It's about making money. And also, you go to somewhere fantastical and amazing like Britain, it's about making your name politically as well. If you come to Britain as an emperor in particular, you want to make your name. Ah, so it's sort of a political kudos and then resources, really, or money making. Like, what did Britain offer in terms of making money for the Romans? Well, the Romans were aware before Caesar came that there were metals being exported anyway for thousands of years to the continent, so metals tin, lead, um, precious metals like silver and gold, but in, importantly in this part of the world, iron as well. But also Britain was famous from the time of Caesar onwards for exporting hunting dogs, interestingly, mass, uh, 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 huge hunting dogs, mastiffs, and also for uh, woolen goods, and also, interestingly, for slaves as well. And what that tells us is the various tribes and confederations of tribes in Roman Britain were always fighting each other, uh, one of the things the Romans later exploited when they invaded Britain, and that creates slaves as well. So there was money to be made, but by the same token, this is the Wild West. Once it becomes part of the Roman Empire, it's the Wild West. This is as far from Rome as you're going to get. Wow. Okay, were there any emperors that sort of wanted to wanted to invade or conquer Britain that it didn't quite work out for them? The, to us, Julius Caesar is the most important Roman, but... For the Romans themselves, it was Augustus, the great Augustus, the first emperor who became the emperor in 27 BC. He was a very clever chap, Augustus, and he planned to invade Britain three times, but each time he found an excuse not to because of the jeopardy involved. Huge amphibious invasion, very dangerous, even in the modern world, an amphibious invasion. So he found an excuse not to. And then you have the mad Caligula. Yeah. So Caligula also wants to invade Britain, Became the emperor, not very popular, wanted to do something fantastical to make his name. So he planned, but his legionaries would not board the boats in AD 40. Why, why couldn't he persuade people to get on the boat? Because it was so scary. It's a really, really, really frightening thing to do, even for a Roman legionary, who is the elite warrior, for me, of the entire ancient world. Even for the Roman legionaries, they were still too scared to get on the boats. And he didn't have the personal charisma to convince them to do it. Um, so what he did was he got his legionaries to march up and down the coast on the Shingle beaches in Gaul, fill the helmets with pebbles, and then take it back to Rome. And then he had a parade in Rome to show that he conquered Oceanus, as the Romans then called the English Channel. Right, so we've talked about why Romans came to Britain and why some Romans couldn't even get here in the first place. But we really need to get into it and find out who the first Roman to conquer Britain is. Are you happy to help me with that? Louise, I'd love to help you with that. Perfect. All right, let's go. Hey, great. Right, Simon, so we've come here to Ramsgate, overlooking the gorgeous beaches here where the Romans first invaded. And we're on a mission to find the first Roman to conquer Britain. And we've narrowed it down to five contenders. And those contenders are Julius Caesar, Claudius, Agricola, 
Hadrian and Septimius Severus. What I need is your help in figuring out which one of those might be the first Roman to conquer Britain. Are you up for it? Happy to help. Brilliant. All right, let's start with this guy. Very popular, big name. A lot of people were saying him, Julius Caesar. Now, are we right in thinking that he invaded Britain? So Julius Caesar came to Britain in 55 and 54 BC um, as part of his conquests of Gaul. So he didn't come specifically from Italy, etc. He came as part of his conquest of Gaul. Now, Caesar never intended to overwinter here, I don't think. I think he came as part of a PR exercise when he was trying to make himself the biggest name sort of in the Roman world, and it was the Roman Republic, not the Empire. It wasn't an emperor, it was the Roman Republic. Um, so I call them incursions. He came over on two incursions, 55 and 54 BC. Okay, so you're, is, you're saying it's not even an invasion, it's an incursion. What would you say is the difference? Um, an invasion means you're intending to stay. So the Romans don't do things by half. If they're coming to stay and create a province, that's very different to coming in what is effectively an armed reconnaissance. Um, an invasion, you want to stay. An incursion, it's coming over and then going back again. So why invade? You said earlier that it's not a, it's not a small trip across the, across the channel. So why invade if you don't... Or why why carry out an incursion, sorry, if you don't plan to stay? In late Iron Age Britain, so Britain before the Romans, there was a lot of commonality with the Gauls. And a lot of Gallic refugees were coming here because they'd been defeated by Caesar and Gaul. This is where they were coming to hide and try and find a place of safety. And they were agitating the local Britons, come on, help us fight, fight these Romans who were conquering Gaul. Um, but also Caesar knew that there was uh, sort of raw materials here, like metals, etc., where we could make a bit of money. But Caesar principally was intent, was intent on making his own name throughout all of his campaigns. And Britain was a fantastical place for him to be the first Roman of significance to come to. So he just wanted to sort of just pop over in a way, just so he could tell people he'd been here, really. Absolutely, but this is popping over on a scale that the Romans would you popping over. So the first time he came over in 55 was with 10,000 men. OK, it's quite a big pop, yeah. And then the second time was an even bigger pop, 25,000 men. Uh, in the first pop when he came over, um, his cavalry didn't arrive, and that's quite difficult, actually, if you're campaigning on land, because it means you can't really scout ahead and you can't chase a beaten enemy. So he didn't get much further than the coast in 55. But in 54, as a full fat campaign, he eventually fought his way through Kenton over the, the Thames, forced the peace, peace treaty on the Britons. Uh, and, and that is very important mm. in the narrative of Britain in the Roman world, because it puts Britain on the Roman map. OK, so he comes over. He is not, I'm assuming it wasn't a very warm welcome. There were amphibious incursions. And the first time he had to land against a hostile shore because the Britons actually were ready for him. Not the second time, but the first time. Um, and that was a really tough invasion in 55. It's one of Caesar's worst campaigns, actually, if not his worst. Didn't plan it very well. Logistics weren't very well planned. Didn't do his reconnaissance of the coastline here very well. Uh, it was told by the people who'd come over to recce it for him. The best place to land was on the White Cliffs of Dover, which is a bit daft when you think about it, because when he arrived, he's got big white cliffs, and on the top, they're the native Britons chucking rocks and stones and oh, really? firing arrows and throwing jabbers <laughs> at him. So he hoptails it up here behind where you are, um, so looking towards the uh, sort of uh, northeast coast of Kent, Pegwell Bay, all the way down to sort of Deal and Walmer, and that's the sort of area where he lands, and the Britons follow him. So he's coming up on his ships. The Britons are going, it's all like a cartoon. The Britons <laughs> on the coast, Caesar on the ships. Caesar realises, he gets here, it's a very good place to land. He's going to have to fight his way ashore. Uh, this is what Caesar tells us. It's always worth remembering. We know everything about Caesar through his own words. The best PR man in the ancient world. Um, but the Romans come ashore eventually, but it's a poor campaign. It doesn't get off the beach very much. But the second campaign, actually, is much better. He's learned all his mistakes. Um, he is a great military leader, actually. He led himself down, I think, in the first campaign. But in 54, he gets what he wants. But both times, very importantly, he doesn't intend to overwinter. That's a good point, though. So everything we know about this, about Julius Caesar coming to Britain, is from him, something he wrote down. Yeah. So he says that he came over he, the second time. There was an awful battle. He, the Romans won. But then they just leave again. I know you say that they, don't, they never intended to stay over winter. But is there not a part of you that thinks that maybe they lost and Julius Caesar went back and was like, oh, no, no, absolutely thrashed them, absolutely thrashed them. The second campaign was very, very, very well planned. He'd learned all his mistakes. And to my mind, actually, if he intended to overstay, he'd have bought provisions. But he didn't. He's such a good PR man 
that I would imagine in your Vox Pops, most people who say who, who conquer Britain would say Caesar. That's amazing. You think about that. 2,000 yeah. years ago, someone's writing the word. We're still repeating today. Yeah. Do you think you'd be good at social media? I think Caesar will be absolutely superb at social media. <laughs> I can imagine that he'd um, spend money on employing the best media consultants in the world today. I would love to see the social media feed of his invasion of Britain. Yes. Arri- arrived off the coast of Dover. Um, <laughs> bit of a problem, but we overcame it. Yeah. <laughs> Right, it's really interesting, but ultimately we need to know, as so I'll hand him over to you, Julius Caesar, is he a finalist for the first Roman to conquer Britain? No. It's a thumbs down from thumbs me. Down. Thumbs down from me, no. Oh gosh, and why is that? Just because he didn't actually invade or no, conquer? No, he didn't conquer anything. He just came over and went back twice. He did some good stuff for the Romans. He helped set that foundation, but... What I would say is Julius Caesar put Britain on the Roman map uh, and he plays a key role in the story of Roman Britain because he set a precedent, but he did not conquer Britain because he did not overwinter. So, no. Nope. So, all for right. me, Caesar is going down there. Oh, all right. Bye, Caesar. Bye, Caesar. Don't know if you'd like that. <laughs> that wouldn't be going on a social media feed, would it? <laughs> but he can't spin that. <laughs> Brilliant. So, next up, we have Claudius. Now, earlier we were stood on the Claudian gateway, so I feel like that's a bit of a hint that he may have invaded Britain. Is that right? Um, Claudius actually himself didn't carry out the invasion of Britain. Oh my gosh, drama. So, okay. so people call it the Claudian invasion, but actually Claudius was very, very canny. Um, Claudius is very ill-favoured if you look at the way he's written up in the, 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 the ancient sources and then the way that he's interpreted in modern sources today as well. But then, in actual fact, he was a very successful emperor. Um, however, when he became the emperor, he needed a big political win quickly mm-hmm. because he was a very unlikely emperor, to say the least, to start with. And he decided to do the most incredible thing, which was to invade Britain. Um, but he also knew that if he failed, he'd be dead. So therefore, he chose his best general, who was called Aulus Plautius, and he chose four elite legions and put together a really impressive logistical package with 40,000 men and a huge fleet of 900 ships to carry them. And that was what we call today the Claudian invasion. But it was not led by Claudius. Oh, gosh. Okay, so Claudius, the Claudian invasion, Claudius didn't lead it. He didn't actually do the invading. Did he ever come to Britain? He did, yeah. Well, basically, um, the narrative of the Claudian invasion is the Romans land somewhere across um, the coastline behind you there. Okay. Um, let's say on any of the beaches between um, Walmer, Deal and here Pegwell Bay, including the Watson Channel. Um, this is 40,000 men, so it's an enormous fall. So they're not landing in small packets. Yeah. They're landing, you know, across the entire front. Um, and then they mount a campaign which includes a very jeopardous river crossing battle halfway through the campaign, which is probably on the River Medway. The last two days, Romans only just won. The Romans had lost it. Roman Britain may have not, not have existed. Probably one of the most important battles in British history. But they win. And the Britons flee back across the Thames. There's another river crossing battle to cross the Thames. And there, the Britons then flee back to their regional capital, which is modern Colchester, Camelodunum. And the Romans chase them. And it's at that point, when the Britons are on the run back to their regional capital, that Claudius gets called over by Aulus Plautius with... Famously, his elephants, who are actually not war elephants, they're from his zoo, his menagerie. He brought elephants over. Brought elephants to Britain to show the Britons how mighty he was. I've got these incredible animals. I mean, I'm assuming at the time, people in Britain wouldn't have seen elephants before. No, and frankly, a lot of Romans wouldn't have seen elephants either. (laughs) So actually, this is a very, very big deal. So the emperor arrives, the most important person in the entire known world, as far as anybody around here is concerned, including the Britons, with elephants. I'm just imagining the local Brits thinking, God, these Romans have got big dogs, haven't they? <laughs> well, you know, you know in, in terms of popular culture, the great analogy will be in Game of Thrones having a dragon. Yeah, right? yeah. It's something that's truly go, oh my goodness, what is that? Yeah. Um, so they come, so Claudius comes over, they arrive at Camelodon and the Britons sue for peace, um, quite a few of the local tribes sue for peace, and then the province of Britannia is declared and Plautius gets made the first governor of Britannia, which at that point is only affected with the southeast of Britain. Yeah. So why was Claudius so desperate for a really big win? Claudius was the most unlikely person within the Julio-Claudian family to become the emperor. Um, ill-favoured, he's talk, talking about him being ill-formed and stuttering when he speaks in the primary sources, etc. Not taken seriously by his contemporaries, high and low. 
Uh, and it's the Praetorian Guard that make him the emperor because they think he's malleable at the point where Caligula's assassinated. Uh, and in actual fact, it, what I think is that Claudius is very good at surviving. Mm. So if you look at the history of the Julio Claudius, it's quite br brutal and bloody. Basically, I think he's been playing the fool a lot to ensure his own personal survival. Wow, OK, so he becomes emperor and is like, I need to, I basically need a big win. I need to do something big so that people take me seriously. Exactly right. That's spot on. I was playing the fool. But, oh, my God, I'm now the emperor. Yeah. If I don't get this right, I'm dead as well. I better do something yeah. amazing. I know I'll go full Game of Thrones. So unfolds one of the most important events um, in British history. The Claudian invasion, even though we know that he didn't lead it. The Claudian invasion, because this is what creates the Roman promise of Britain. So if that had failed, either at the point of not, not leaving or not landing or the Battle of the Medway or crossing the River Thames or even in any final engagements near Camelodon and modern Colchester, then the story of British history would be completely and utterly different. It's one of those real sliding door moments in British history. Yeah. So the Claudian invasion has happened. They've, they've been victorious. But how much does Claudius, or rather Aulus Plautius, how much do they gain of Britain? When the province is declared, it's effectively the lands of the Cantiaci, so this is Kent, okay. who remain the most loyal of the British tribes to the Roman Empire from that point. That is probably Essex, um, maybe Hertfordshire, and into the Thames Valley. Okay. So it's effectively the southeast. Okay, the southeast, that sort of yeah. triangular slice of the southeast. Literally, yeah. Brilliant. Um, so what happens then? Why, does, why do they not try and go any further? It's all about logistics because they've just fought this campaign. They've got 40,000 men over. They fought us a, a campaign through to what's probably towards the end of October. It's now beginning to move towards winter, and you don't campaign in winter in the pre-modern world because it logistically is too dangerous. OK, so they've come over, they've got that bottom triangular slice. You know, that's, a good, that's good going yeah. from having nothing, apart from a few merchants maybe that Julius Caesar left, yeah. to having that bottom slice, and then they sort of go, that's enough for, for us to celebrate back in Rome. It is, yeah. So they have a triumph in Rome, and then Claudius calls himself Britannicus. So he bolts a cognomen onto him at the end of his name, saying, I'm Britannicus, yeah. I conquered Britain. Um, OK, so I feel like I've got an inkling of how you're going to go here, but Claudius... Can we say he's in the running as a finalist uh, for the first Roman to conquer Britain? So here is Claudius, the ill-favoured Claudius, who turns out to be one of the greatest Roman emperors, in my opinion, actually. So we're going to go... Yes! Yes! Really? Yes! Yes! Right. yes. So Claudius, through Aulus Plautius, I think conquered Britain. OK, so Claudius featuring Aulus Plautius is going at the back here. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Next up, we have a chap called Agricola, who, am I right in thinking he wasn't an emperor either? So Agricola was a governor. So in a Roman province, you have two chains of command. You have a governor mm -hmm. who is the emperor's legal and crucially military representative. So he's basically the emperor's guy in the province. And then just below him in sort of ordering points, you have someone called a procurator who's like the chancellor, okay. who's there to make sure that they rinse the province dry okay. and get all the wealth into the imperial treasury. Um, so Agricola was a governor. Um, he's got a lot of form in Britain, actually, because in his early life, actually, he fought in the crucial battle against Boudicca, where oh, the cool. governor at the time, Paul Linus, defeated um, Boudicca. Yeah. So he was a junior officer. So he knew a bit about Britain anyway, anyway when he came over. OK, so he is a Roman real military guy and he grew up almost fighting in, in Roman Britain. Absolutely, yeah. So he knows Britain um, and he's chosen very specifically by the emperor <clears throat> to come to Britain because the emperor's decided uh, that the Flavian dynasty has taken over from the Julia claudia dynasty. They've decided that actually they need their own kind of success like Claudius's earlier invasion. Now, what the Romans hadn't done to that point is conquer the whole of the main island of Britain. They've just got that bottom triangle sort of area. Well, by Agricola's time, they'd spent about 40 years sort of carving southeast to northwest, mm -hmm. slice after slice after slice of British territory, and then bolting it into the province. So the province had incrementally, with great difficulty in many cases, especially in Wales, uh, been enlarged. But it hadn't gone beyond the line that today uh, we know is the line of Hadrian's Wall, built later. Uh, which is from the Solway Firth to the Tyne. So conquering the far north of Britain is not just fantastical in terms of conquering um, 
Britain as Claudius did. It's almost going into a Conradian heart of darkness, which is terrifying for the Romans. They're scared of Britain anyway, but going to a far, far north era in modern Scotland is really, really scary. So, so the Flavians realise that conquering the far north of Britain will be their big thing. And he's the guy they turn to. So he becomes governor. What, is, what does he do? What does he set about doing? First, well, when he first arrives, he... Um, so we're talking about... I mean, his main campaign period is in the early uh, AD 80s. Uh, and when he arrives, the first thing he does is finish off things in Wales. Then he tidies things up in the north of Britain. Just finish things. You make that sound very nice. Just tidy a few things up in Wales. It's worth remembering <laughs> that the Roman legions were effectively an industrial-scale killing machine. OK. Right? Blimey. So the Roman legionary... Uh, with his gladius sword was the cutting edge of a, an industrial scale killing machine. So when the Romans really went for it, they went for it. Um, they, they declared genocides against peoples who rebel against them. They don't muck about at all. Yeah. So, so um, the Romans have finished mucking about with Wales. The, ch- the kitchen, kitchen sink at Wales under Agricola dealt with. Then you have the north of Britain, still a few problems. This is a tribe confederation called the Brigantes. Same thing there, tidies everything up. Quite a few of the forts in the north of England today are forced from that period when wow. Agricola's tidying things up. He's doing that because he's securing his rear. Mm-hmm. And then he sort of gets to the line of the Solway Firth Tide, he's looking to the Scottish borders. And then he mounts multiple campaigns over years, north uh, through the Scottish borders and then into the Midland Valley. So that's five, he's going over the Clyde Forth, all the way up towards the Highland Line and above the Highland Line. So what's going on in Scotland before the Romans? I personally call all the natives of Britain, whether in the far north or the south, Britons, OK? But the Romans have got multiple names for them. One of the names the Romans use for the peoples in the far north of Britain is the Caledonians. OK, I was going to say, why, why did they want to invade Scotland? Or why, why was it not just enough to sort of reach where they want, they, they'd got to? Is it, what does Scotland have that they would want? I think you've got three things in play. I think there's wealth to be had, because part, many parts of modern Scotland are very fertile. There's lots of raw materials there, etc. So, so there's money to be had. Uh, secondly, you have the fact that the peoples in the far north are causing trouble on the Roman frontier to the south. Um, so the Romans always need a really large military presence in Britain because they've got to deal with the far north. Uh, and then thirdly, this is the Flavian dynasty. They've taken over from the mighty Julio-Claudians. Um, they need political capital from military and martial success. So it's all about making the name of the dynasty. Had any other Romans tried to invade Scotland and conquer Scotland before? And why weren't they successful? It's really important to remember, firstly, that we're seeing the ge- geographic divide of modern Scotland and England through the prism of today. But for the Romans, that wasn't there. So they just knew there was land up there, then more land up there, and then more, more land, land up there. More land for the taking. More land for the taking, if it was worth the effort. Yeah. It's always if it's worth the effort. Um, and there was a political reason to do it. Now... One, maybe two earlier governors maybe did campaign in the Scottish borders. But to me, it appears that nobody had really gone for it to that point. So it's down to Agricola to be the first Roman to really try and conquer the north of Britain, so the whole of the main island of Britain. And how successful was he? I think he was successful, actually. I think Agricola is probably the only Roman who could claim to have conquered the whole main island of Britain, but only very briefly. Um, he fought a battle in AD 83 in the Grampian Mountains, probably, just south of the Moray Firth, so in the far north of Scotland, uh, where he defeated the Caledonians. And then he ordered his regional fleet, which was called the Classic Britannica, to circumnavigate the whole main island of Britain. Uh, and at that point, you get the monumental arch built at Richborough, uh, because the emperor at that point, the mission, the last of the Flavian emperors, decides to monumentalise the Roman success. I think that's saying we've conquered the whole main island of Britain because he basically got the fleet to circumnavigate Britain. Agricola has managed to conquer all of Britain. What's next? Does he look to Ireland? Do they go elsewhere? That's a great question. Halfway through his campaigning period in, in modern Scotland, so before Mons Graupius, he does ask Domitian for permission to invade Ireland with a legion. And Domitian's the emperor? Domitian's the emperor. And he thinks that a legion's going to be enough to conquer modern Ireland. Uh, and the, which is very problematic, by the way. I don't think that's anywhere near enough, but there you go. Um, uh, but, but crucially, for the rest of British history from that point, Domitian says no. Why is that? Domitian's very unpopular in Rome. Um, and also, he's got things happening elsewhere in the empire, so you can imagine him flitting his eye here and there, mm. and only briefly does his gaze alight on Britain, and it's only be- at the point when Agricola's going to 
conquer the far north. But before that, it's all more money, it's all more problems. Do I want to invade Ireland? Not really. Just get on with it. Finish it's like what, an effort. It's an effort. Get on with what <laughs> my dad and my brother, elder brother told you to do, but hurry up. And then he gets news that um, Agricola's conquered the far north. And you go, oh, hold on. <laughs> This actually is better than I thought. So did he not, I mean, how much did he know what was happening? Or was it more Agricola was sort of just running around Britain and then and then Domitian sort of was like, oh, hang on, oh, I, that, that seems like a good thing and I can sort of claim that for my own. Think about communications in the ancient world, right? So get a message using the, the, the public postal system, um, the Cursus Publicus, um, from Rome to Britain, which a lot of that journey would be by sea or by river. Uh, would have been probably about 15 to 21 days, okay? So he's always going to be two to three weeks behind with the news anyway, and he's already dealing with issues on the Rhine and the Danube. So I think it's only this incredible success Agricola had in the far north that drags his attention here, and then quite quickly afterwards he goes back certainly to the Danube, and he actually withdraws troops from Britain to fight elsewhere in the empire. So I think actually without that political imperative to spend the money to maintain the troops in the far north, the Romans decide, you know what, it's not really worth it, to be honest. Um, so at that point, Agricola's called back to Rome and then more or less disappears from history, by the way, wow. which is astonishing because he's one of the greatest commanders sort of in Roman contemporary history. Um, and the Roman li line of sort of like frontier, the line of the frontier in the north drops down to the line of the Solway for the tide again gradually okay. um, through the reign of Nerba and the reign of Trajan um, to the line of what we call today Hadrian's Wall. How long under Agricola did, you, did they have Britain, all of Britain? I would imagine somewhere between three and six months. Wow, that's not very long, is it? And, and for me, that's the only time the Romans can ever play to have conquered the whole main island of Britain. Go on then, Agricola. Is he a finalist for the first Roman to conquer Britain? Agricola is a finalist and Agricola is a finalist because Agricola is I think the only Roman to truly claim to conquer the whole main island of Britain. It was brief but it counts, it counts. Absolutely, thumbs right. up. Right we'll pop him back there with Claudius then. All right next up we have a chap who really left his mark on Britain, it's Hadrian. So how much of Britain did he conquer? Hadrian conquered nothing at all in Britain, nothing at all. Hadrian uh, is known in Britain today because of Hadrian's Wall, which is the wall that he built to fortify the frontier which the Romans created after Agricola was pulled back from the far north. Um, and it was part of a fortification campaign across the entire northern frontier, so in Germany along the Danube as well. So there was nothing special about it, and he was the Roman emperor that basically turned the Roman Empire from offence to defence. Okay. And instead of going on conquest, he decided to do a tour of his empire, going to see all the provinces, went to Egypt, went everywhere else, and he came to Britain as part of his grand parade along the northern frontier. And when he came to Britain, he monumentalised his visit by building Hadrian's Wall. OK, so the wall is more a sign of him sort of just reinforcing a border rather than actually advancing at all. Absolutely, and there's a debate about whether the Hadrian's Wall is a military frontier or whether it's something more civilian, like to do with taxation or controlling commerce. But the bottom line is, it's a very significant stone-built military fortification used for something, uh, which he built to delineate the province to the south from the unconquered part of Britain to the north. He arrived in AD 122, became the emperor in 117. Um, and when he became the emperor, actually, he wasn't very popular. It wasn't really expected. Um, and across many parts of the empire, including in Britain, there was sort of writing about sort of him becoming the emperor. And so for him, in the same way that Claudius chose to secure his own throne by invading Britain, or the Flavians decided to get martial glory through getting Agricola to conquer the far north of Britain. For him, his monumentalisation to secure his own throne was to sort of build these fortifications. And the one we know best today is, of course, Hadrian's Wall, because yeah. it carries his name. So he's not a big military guy. I think people would assume that. There's Hadrian's Wall, we, we know about the Romans being in Britain. You assume that he was a big military guy. That's not true. I would argue that all Roman emperors are going to be, to, to a greater or a lesser extent, military guys. But on that scale, he's lesser, not greater. And certainly he didn't try and conquer the far north of Britain. So, so there's no evidence whatsoever that he conquered any part of Britain. Interestingly, by the way, until the mid-19th century, most people used to call Hadrian's Wall Septimius Severus's Wall because the inscriptions on the wall recording building to that point mostly were to do with the later emperor, Septimius Severus. 
And it's only in the sort of later 19th century that people start realising, oh, actually, that's referencing Hadrian. So actually, it began under Hadrian. Severus actually rebuilt parts of it, but it originally was built under Hadrian. Um, right. So Hadrian, so this is the big, big sort of drum roll is needed here. Is he in the running for the first Roman to conquer Britain? No. no. And actually, if I could get away with it, I'd throw it over there on the beach. <laughs> but I'm going to be very well behaved, so I'm yeah. just going to put it quietly down. Yeah, we need to keep the frames, so we do that. All right. Bye, Hadrian. <laughs> right. So you mentioned Septimius Severus then, and he's the chap we're going to talk about next. We've already had someone take all of Scotland and all of Britain. So what can Severus bring to the table? Severus, to me was the greatest of the warrior emperors. There are more Roman legions than the Severus, who was the emperor from 193 to 211, when he died in York, incidentally. And he's got this incredible story arc where he's born uh, in 8145 in Leptis Magna in modern Libya in sort of April. So the burning sort of spring of a North Af- in North Africa dies in the freezing cold of a February in, in York in 8211 at the age of 65. Um, and when he becomes the emperor, he doesn't like being in Rome. He spends most of his life on campaign. Towards the end of Severus's life, he's conquered the Parthians, the Persians, and he's looking around how he can really, really cement towards the end of his life his martial reputation. And he decides he's going to invade the far north of Britain again. So he's going to do Agricola again, but his intention is to stay. And he really goes for it. He brings over 50 thousand men okay. which is the largest campaigning force ever on british soil really so ever. ever not just in roman ever 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 so fifty thousand fifty thousand men. men and he invades scotland twice in 209 and 210 and he does conquer the whole of the lowlands of scotland up to the highland line which probably was his intention i don't think he wanted to conquer the whole of the far north but he does conquer all the lowlands, which is where he thinks the money's to be made. Oh, um, uh, OK. I was going to say, why would he not want to invade the, high, the highest area? But it's just because he doesn't think it's worth it. I think so, yeah. And also, it's, it's a huge challenge. His campaigns, actually, are very gruelling, really. The weather's terrible. Oh, no. You know, so worth remembering that the Romans describe... They don't describe the weather in Britain sort of in, in any unequivocal sense. They call it cold and wet, full mm. stop. And the weather in the far north of Britain in his campaigns was terrible. The primary source so terrible. So it's much worse than usual. And the native Britons there, who by this time have coalesced into two huge confederations called the Maitier and the Caledonians. Maitier sort of towards the south of Scotland, the Caledonians towards the north of Scotland. Um, they're not having anything. It's one of the narratives for the engagement of the people to the far north of Britain with the Romans, that the people in the far north just weren't having it. They just were not interested in <laughs> not engagement. Having it. Not having it. They just weren't having it. Uh, and they really weren't having it in this campaign. And actually, this was a very sanguineous campaign, yeah. the 209 or 210. Uh, but he eventually succeeds. And then he calls himself Britannicus. Um, and his sons, Caracalla and Gita, who are fighting with him, call themselves Britannicus as well. Wow. Then he goes back to York, celebrates his victory and dies. Oh, gosh. OK. Uh, and because he's dead, there's no political imperative to stay in Britain. His sons, Caracalla and Gita, hate it here can't stand it they want to go back to being living the fast life in rome they flee they leave as quickly as they can they just leave back to, to go to rome um and the romans again lose interest in the far north of britain because yeah. there's no political imperative and the line again drops down to the line of hadrian's wall it's probably around then that this severan refortification takes place which is why you get the, the emperor's name recorded as it's been refortified yeah, OK. I see, yeah, it seems to be a sort of pattern emerging of one person being really enthusiastic to take Scotland and then as soon as they're not there or they're removed, it's like, oh, it just comes back down again because no one else is quite as enthusiastic. Yeah, absolutely. Spot on. Brilliant. All right. So this is the, uh, the big question. Hand it over to you. Severus, is he a finalist for the first Roman to conquer Britain? This is a complicated one, OK? So I'm going to go... I'm staying there. Halfway house. So if that's real candidates... He'd probably be here, but not on the floor. I know, but he didn't really, because he didn't conquer anything more than, than Agricola did. I think it'd be really picky there. But then again, I'm one of the world's biggest fans of September 7th. I know, I feel like you're a bit biased here. I feel All like he right. should go on the floor. For you, I'll throw him on the floor. This really hurts, right? <laughs> you can put him down nicely. I'm sorry, September <laughs> So the moment's come. We've got our two finalists here, Claudius and Agricola. Big question. Who, in your expert opinion was the first to conquer Britain? Right. It's a very difficult question to answer in regard to these two because there are two sort of parts of the question. What do you mean by conquer and what do you mean by Britain? Okay. So in terms of conquer, it's coming to stay and form a province. So Claudius with Aulus Plautius 
did conquer Britain in that he created a province. But if you mean by Britain, the whole main island of Britain, uh, and I think for me it's important that that actually is the case, then I think that is even more important. So for me, it's Agricola, because Agricola is the only Roman to be able to claim to have conquered the whole main island of Britain, which is the way I define using the word Britain. Nice, brilliant. Right, well, in that case, I'll let you do the honours. Claudius? I'm just going to put it beneath Septimius Severus. <laughs> Keep Septimius Severus on top. There we go. And Agricola is in our top spot here. There Good we for go. him as well, like he's not emperor. Ultimate, the ultimate thumbs up. And all the ultimate thumbs up. Brilliant. So there we go. Simon, our expert, says that Agricola is the first Roman to conquer Britain. But what do you think? Does Claudius get your vote? Are you a Septimius Severus fan? And do you think Julius Caesar got stabbed in the back? Let us know in the comments below.